The equation for work, please. Uh, Jessica. Uh, work equals F, uh, this uh, displacement cosine of theta. So work equals the force times the displacement times the cosine of theta. Please remember that force is whatever force happens to be doing the work. It could be the work done by the force applied, the force of friction, the net force, any particular force. What is theta? The angle between you. Think about it. Theta, the angle between you. Force and displacement. The, the two things that are vectors in the equation, which is force and which are force and displacement. I said specifically something about what you use for the force and displacement in this equation. What was that? Uh, magnitude. Remember, you use the magnitude only for the force and the displacement in this equation. We have three different types of mechanical energy. Lily, please give me all three. Um, potential energy, the uh, well, electric potential energy, and the kinetic energy, and the other potential energy. Yes, the other potential energy, Christina, which is? Uh, G. G, which stands for? Jessica, which stands for what? Gravitational. Gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy. Christine, what is the equation for elastic potential energy? Um, one half times a times x squared plus x. What is k? Yeah. It is um, uh, the spring. The spring constant. What is x, Josh? Displacement from equilibrium position. Uh, completely, what is the equation for kinetic energy? Um, one half times mass times velocity squared. Good. Those are pretty apparent. Gravitational potential energy. Same. Oh, um, mass times gravity times acceleration. MGH, mass times the acceleration due to gravity times H. Laura, what is H? Great, please make sure you set your zero line whenever you are dealing with gravitational potential energy. Speaking of three different types of mechanical energy, we have two different equations we can use whenever we have energy. Please tell me one of those two equations and under what circumstances we can use that equation. Nikolai. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final, that is conservation of mechanical energy. And when is that true? when there is no friction. So this equation is true when there is no friction. If you are going to use this equation, you must do what before you can use the equation? Wicket. Identify your initial point, final points, and zero points. Identify your initial and final points and the zero line. Please. What if you do have friction However, you need to use energy. What equation are you going to use then? Cosine. Uh, the work done by friction equals the mechanical energy final minus the mechanical energy initial. Or the change in mechanical energy. Yeah. Right? Okay. Those are the equations we're going to use. And just like uh, for conservation mechanical energy, you're going to use this equation. You still need to identify your initial and final points and the zero. Capital P stands for what, Mario? Capital P does not stand for momentum. Lowercase p is momentum. Capital P. Emma. Power? Power. Not to be confused with lowercase p for momentum. I know they look very similar when I draw them on the board. The top one is the capital P for power. What is the equation? We actually have two different equations for power. Lily, give me one of them. Um, final equals mass times FD cosine theta over T. Ah, which would be work over time. If you substitute in FD cosine theta for work, but we can just put in work over time. We have a second equation for power. Josh, what is that? FD cosine 
theta. What must be true of the velocity in order to use this equation? Meredith. Something must be true about the velocity when you use this equation. It must be constant. This is a constant velocity. If it's not constant, you use the other equation. We have now momentum. The equation for momentum, Ms. Hong, is? Mass times velocity. Mass times velocity. The dimensions, Connie, for momentum are? Kilograms times meters per second. The dimensions for power are, Emma? Watts. Watts. A watt is, Krauss? A joule per second. A joule per second. A joule is, Nick? A joule is not a Newton's per, Josh? Newton meter is a joule. Nick, what are the dimensions on the spring constant? Newtons per meter. What is a Newton? Wheatley. And class dimensions are your? Ah, uh, yes, there we went through a bunch of them. Uh, we have momentum. We have a couple of equations having to do with momentum. One is the net force equals change in momentum over change in time. This is the equation we use for the force of impact during a collision. We can also use conservation of linear momentum, which is the sum of the linear momentum initial equals the sum of the linear momentum final. Under what circumstances can we use conservation of momentum, Mitch? Again, I'm just going to stop you guys for a second. Realize I've asked this question many times with regards to these, these questions, or these equations, right? When can we use conservation of mechanical energy? When are we going to use work due to friction equals change mechanical energy? These are things you really need to know for the final exam. And I understand there's a lot of them right now. And it's okay that you don't know them all. That's why we're reviewing. Please remind me, when can we use conservation of momentum? Mitch. It is true during all collisions and explosions. Uh, S, lowercase cursive. Not necessarily lowercase cursive, but when I do it, it is. Lowercase cursive, S stands for what? Inter arc length. Arc length. The equation for arc length is, Josh? S equals R times theta. In order to use this equation, what must you use for theta? Wicked. Um, the angle between. Not what I'm looking for. What must you use? Something specific to use with theta. Um, Stuck. Radians. Remember, it has to be in radians. Speaking of radians, class, one revolution equals how many radians? Two pi radians, which equals how many degrees? 360 degrees. Is that on your equation sheet? No. Where is it? It's in the open box, which is your brain. So we have S equals R theta. Oh, we also have V sub T. V sub T when you're moving in a circle is called what, Andy? Good. Tangential velocity. The equation for tangential velocity, Laura? Uh, uh, equals R R, W, it is not called W, but it looks very much like a W. Stecker, what is the W called? Omega. Omega, what does Omega stand for, Jessica? Uh, omega stands for two. Angular velocity, so we have tangential velocity equals R times angular velocity. Note, again, you still have to use radians. A sub T stands for tangential acceleration. Michelle, tangential acceleration is equal to? Angular acceleration, the symbol for angular acceleration, Daniela, is called? Alpha, also affectionately called? 
fishy thing. We need equations for the angular velocity, equation for angular velocity, Christina. Good, change in angular position over change in time or change in theta over change in time. Angular acceleration, what is the equation for angular acceleration? Mitch. The change in angular velocity over change in time or change in omega over change in time. We have all of those, oh, that reminds me, we have U fishy M. U fishy M, Knickerbocker stands for? Got some of the right words. Help them out. U fishy M cosine. Uniformly angular acceleration motion. Close. You missed a lead. Um, angular, angularly accelerated. Uniformly angularly accelerated motion. It's a little bit easier to say U fishy M. Just like U A M, we have we go through the same countdown, but it is almost the same. Just uses the um, angular variables rather than the linear one. We also have centripetal acceleration. The word centripetal class means? Center-seeking. Center the centripetal acceleration is the acceleration that is always inward towards the center of the circle and is what causes circular motion. Two equations for centripetal acceleration. Lily, they are? R just depends on which, what you have or what you're trying to find depending on which one you are going to use. The centripetal acceleration, we must also then have something called a centripetal force, which is the net force in the indirection, which just equals mass times centripetal acceleration. I asked you to remember three things about the centripetal force or the net force in the indirection. Please give me one of them, Andy. Emma, help us out. It's not a new force. Number one, it is not a new force. What else? Who's got another one for me? It's not a new force. Krauss? It's not in a free body diagram. It's, therefore, it's never in a free body diagram. Remember, it's not a new force because it's just, the you know, could be the force applied, could be the force of friction, it could be a combination thereof. And the last one. Stecker. Well, going in is positive and out. It just has to do with the direction. In is positive and out is therefore negative. Please remember, whenever you have something moving in a circle you have to do, and you are dealing with forces, you have to draw your free body diagram. We now have two different equations for the force of gravity. The first one is just mass times the acceleration of gravity. The second one is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Weekly, what is the force of gravity equals Newton's universal law of gravitation? Um, the capital G times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second divided by R squared. Class, R is not. It is? This is sometimes confusing because R sometimes is. So please remember, by definition, it is not the radius. It's the distance between the center of mass of the two objects. However, sometimes it does work out to be the radius. When do we use one of these equations versus the other? Nicola. Or some sort of planet. And the other one? It's always true. So we could always use this one. The force of gravity equals m times g is just easier, and we generally are standing on the surface of a planet. Capital T stands for what, Wicked? Okay. The period. What is the definition of the period, Emma? Um, the time it takes for one cycle. The time for one full cycle. We have the period, which is equal to 1 over the frequency. What? is the frequency. Uh, cosine. Oh, the number of cycles per second. The number of cycles per second. We have F sub S, the force of the spring, equals negative K times X. We've already defined the spring constant and the displacement from the equilibrium position. What does the negative in this equation mean? The negative in this equation. Grimmer. 
<clears throat> negative. I need to know what this negative means. Sam. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. What? What's opposite? Act? Oh, um, the the conjunction of the spring constant. Not the spring constant. It's not the spring constant. It's the force of the spring. The spring constant is a scalar. So okay. the force of the spring is opposite the direction of the displacement from equilibrium position. Uh, and once you've used that to draw your free body diagram, you are done with that negative. We have two other equations for the period. Period equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. And we have the period equals 2 pi times the square root of l over g. What is the difference between these two equations? Stecker. Good, so L is by definition the distance from the center of suspension to the mass of the pendulum. Therefore, this equation is for what? Pendulum. The other one is for? Mass spring system. Good, so we have two different, completely different um, items. One's a mass spring system, the other one is a pendulum. SHM stands for, Mitch? Simple harmonic motion. Class, is simple harmonic motion also uniformly accelerated motion? No, absolutely not. The acceleration changes throughout. Therefore, it is not uniformly accelerated motion. When you are doing simple harmonic motion, you have a couple of approaches. You can um, draw a free body diagram and sum the forces. Or, if there is no friction, you can also uh, use conservation of energy. Velocity equals frequency times a wavelength is the speed of a wave. Class, does simple harmonic motion have a wavelength? No. Try that again. Class, does simple harmonic motion have a wavelength? No. So you cannot use this equation for simple harmonic motion. Ladies and gentlemen, people, what you see on the board is a review of everything we've learned in the class so far. Take a moment and enjoy.